So we had dreams of uh, opening a wax shop and uh, it was going to be called, I think, the Bog Beaver. You guys were going on and on about how amazing he waxes your butthole. <laughs> and I was completely caught off guard, had no idea that that was even a thing. We can throw some machine learning AI on there and it can connect to Facebook and all these other social media platforms and you don't even need somebody at the door. It'll just flag them if they walk in and you kick them out. Even when you're looking at people who don't look like they're wearing makeup, they're still wearing makeup because they blot out all the shiny spots on your skin. I'm glad I didn't meet Andrew when I was in school. We definitely would not have um, gotten along. Why? You were a jock. You were an, I mean, you're still an, you're just not a jock I was, anymore. I it's going to probably change your life. You're going you're gonna to be like, every 90 days, you're like, can you come over here and get spot again? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. If anybody was excited to see me in pain, today's your lucky day. I'm excited. Corey and Larry Ellis are here. And apparently for episode 100, uh, you guys get to see me have my nose hairs waxed. <laughs> I trimmed up my beard a little bit, my mustache the other day. And I almost started, this was last Friday actually that I did this. I started changing the little head on my trimmer. And I was like, no, I told him I'll do it. I'm committed. Well, I don't. I don't think you told us. I think um, no, it was us. something like you have these long nose hairs. I think she said. Yeah, and she I was like, I can, okay. Me. Okay. I can handle those. I can handle those. Okay. First of all, we were not the ones who brought up the waxing conversation. You guys were going on and on about how amazing <laughs> he waxes your butthole. <laughs> And I was completely caught off guard, had no idea that that was even a thing. I look over at Andrew and I'm like, do you see these spider legs crawling out of his nose? Can you take care of those if you can do buttholes? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a <laughs> vagina. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I haven't done too many nose hairs. It's usually... Your own, yeah, yeah. My, your own. Buttholes. But you said yeah. you said that at one point you owned or ran or operated a salon or something. So like that? I used to own a bar, and one of my bartenders was like, she owned a salon, and she was like struggling and asked me for some help. Corey and I, she, Corey's had her hair license for like since she was like nineteen. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, so you were learning new stuff. Practice. So I was okay. like, no, nah, I'm not into it. And then finally, I, I uh, started helping her out and. So I was like, but if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to like, I'm going to go to beauty school, right? Wow. So at this time, I you're committed. Quit my cop job. You know, I own a bar in town, and then I, and meanwhile, I'm attending beauty school, right? And I, I get there, I'm like, 35 years old, something like this, because I want to figure out how the industry works. <clears throat> so I go there. I'm like, there's Mike, me, one other guy, well, kind of a guy, I guess. Uh, kind of. Um, <laughs> and like 25 <laughs> girls, and all. I'm like 35 at the time, and they're all like. You know, 19, 20, 21, you know? Right. So, good but I'm, I'm looking across this room and I'm like, all these girls like drink at my bar. <laughs> and I'm like, none of them are 21, right? No. So this is the day I figure out that they all have fake ideas, oh, right? No. So I call my my buddy's dad's chief police in town. So I'm like, hey man, I just figured out like, all these girls are like coming to my bar drinking. Like, what's my liability here? You know, like we check IDs and make sure they're valid, not expired and all that. And he's like, well, as long as they got the height, hair color, and all this stuff right, I mean, you really like you're doing your job, you know. Like you got, you know that you know you can't let them in, obviously. But uh, it was kind of a kind of eye opener. But there was a bar in uh, my hometown years ago, and I don't know what this checked against, but they had a little machine, and they had to actually put your ID down on it so that any of the barcodes mm -hmm. or whatever they were on the back scanned it is was that a thing we ended up buying that machine actually but it just tells you it's a valid id right i mean does it belong to this person you know the, the biggest thing with with women because they dye their hair a lot right so it's hard to tell right sometimes but he says as long as the height and eye color match up you kind of can't really do anything about it interesting good to know you don't need a fake id you're you're good i have two daughters oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like, those days long. Yeah, <laughs> world. 
<laughs> would it even cross my mind? I, first of all, have never had a fake ID in my entire life, but in what? No, I was thinking of the girls. I, mm, what, what are you going to do? Go through their stuff every day? Every, every, before they go out, like, hey, let me see what ID you're carrying with you when you no, go out. I'm with not going to be that invasive. I'm just going to have conversations with them. Ah, uh, yeah, those work. They're harder to. I wonder. Have you seen the new driver's license? Mm. I don't have my wallet on me. I mean, I think I have one. The new driver's license has like there's like partial transparent areas. Your last name is woven into everything. Your part of your social security number. Hmm. Like there, there's a there's a green and old lizard on part of it, and. Hmm. The tail of the lizard is your last name repeated over and over again. It's like getting all those fine little details would be ridiculous. Well, they just borrow their friend's ID, right? That kind of looks like them. Yeah. The friend that looks the most like you. I was thinking fake ID, like forged ID. But (laughs) yeah. Yeah. It's much harder now. I wonder what the new, like, state ID slash learners. Well, the nice thing about the scan machines is it tells you if that ID's already been scanned that night, right? Uh-huh. Mm. So that makes it a little... So you can't funny. pass it to the girl behind you? Right. Gotcha. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. And that's old technology. There's probably something new since your days then. How many years ago was that? Yeah. Well, it's been a while. 2008. <laughs> ish Yeah. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. eventually they're going to... These places are probably already being sold... You know, like further security system that they're already using. Hey, we can throw some machine learning AI on there and it can connect to Facebook and all these other mm-hmm. social media platforms and you don't even need somebody at the door. It'll just flag them if they walk in and you kick them out. I mean, that's a simple solution. And assuming there's not some ridiculous subscription price, you're weighing the difference between do I need a guy at the door or do I just have my security cameras that I already have to do the job? Mm-hmm. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> you were going back to beauty school, and yeah, I mean, all these young girls had to wax for right? yeah. days, and it wasn't just cutting hair. It was like you, they taught you how to wax eyebrows and you know whatever, right? Human body. Uh, so at that point, because the salon wasn't waxing, right? I'm like, you guys need to start waxing because what we learned was it was hard to break a girl from her hairdresser. Cause they usually been going for years, right? So we remember I don't have to remember Groupon. Yep. So we ran these specials on Groupon. It was like fifty percent off, like. You know, eyebrow waxing and, and pedicures. So I went by all these pedicure stations. That was an easy way to get them in. And I'm like, hey, you guys, you girls have an hour to rub these people's feet or wax their eyebrows and take them as a client, right? That was right. the way you broke them from their hair, their previous hairstyles. Right. So we did that. And the waxing was like quickly became quick, easy, fast money, right? It was like they're in and out in five, five, ten minutes. They're done, right? So we had dreams of uh, opening a wax shop and uh it was going to be called, I think, the Bald Beaver. Oh, my God. Like this I love beaver. that. Um, <laughs> okay. So how do you go from cop to bar owner? I guess that transition happens for a lot of cops and firefighters. Mm-hmm. But how do you go cop, bar owner, beauty, esthetician? Is that what it is? So I don't know if you know how much cops make, but <laughs> it's pretty easy to transition out of that. Yeah. So, um but then the bar, to real estate, I guess. The bar was making, you know, good money, right? It was outweighing my daily job. And yeah, I was doing real estate at the time too. Um, but I got into it just by fault because a girl I knew that worked for me, she had a salon, right? And she was okay. struggling. So we were trying to help her out, which we did. We got real busy. And, you know, then I was kind of done with that business. I didn't want to keep doing it. It's too much. Uh, but you still want a bald beaver. It's too nitpicky, place. right? So it's like. Not just the Too catty, I guess, right? I, yeah. I feel like Carolina Beach is the perfect place to have a bald beaver. Right. That That's exactly your niche. Uh, uh, I don't know. Is there an animal, animal similar to a beaver that would be, like, more relatable in this area? Otter. Bald otter? Isn't there otters? They have otters at the aquarium. Yeah, there's otters around here, yeah, meant, but... Like, what, like a euphemism that people use. That doesn't use. sound as good as a bald beaver. Right, that's what I'm, I'm asking specifically about an animal that... There's beavers here, aren't there beavers here? Well, there's two right here. <laughs> <laughs> I know one's bald. It's already bald. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, okay, so transition from cop to bar owner to beauty... Consultant. Consultant to <laughs> real estate, like 
is this just every time you're like, you know what, there's a better opportunity or it just sounds interesting or well, the, the, the beauty industry is here. Something was just me helping out a friend essentially. Right. But I wasn't going to do that without understanding the industry and like, what it takes to do somebody's hair. Cause I mean, I don't have hair, right? So I had to figure out like <laughs> what it would take to, you know, how long is a girl sitting in this chair, right? Is it one to four hours? Is mm -hmm. it, you know, how, how are they making money, right? So it was more like, I just went to the school for like about three months. It's like a nine month thing, you know, 12 months, something like that. But I just needed to get the basics down. And gotcha. you know, after that, I didn't want to complete the hours. I never got my, I never got my license or anything like this, so. Uh, so talking about the baldness and all that stuff. I just saw there's a meme going around about the hairstylist for Breaking Bad. And somebody took still images of the majority of the male characters who are all bald. And they all had the same hairstylist on the show. And it was like, we need to take, we should take a moment to appreciate her hard work. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, uh, I've done a, a couple of commercials for clients in the past. And I didn't realize even when you're looking at people who don't look like they're wearing makeup, they're still wearing makeup because they blot out all the shiny spots on mm. your skin. Mm, Adam, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so I'm sitting there in a chair. I think I sent her a picture a couple of years ago when I was sitting there getting my makeup put on. And she was like, it's, I mean, those girls work hard. I mean, standing up all day and like <laughs> leaning over and I'm just like, which is not easy on your feet all day, right? It's like, it's a tough job, man. That's They're in there 10, 8, 12 hours a day, like, doing hair, you know? Do people that have to wear prosthetics, like, have you watched the Colin Farrell Penguin show on HBO? No. Mm -mm. I he don't watch a lot of TV. He's wearing prosthetic, you know, like, face. Everything is doing that every single day mm. to film a six episode or ten. I don't know how many episodes it is. There's, like, three out so far. But having to sit in the chair and do that every day because you're not going to wear it to bed. You're not going to go home. You're going to take it all off and then come back and do it again the next day. I don't want to do it. So while he was in beauty school, what were you doing? Oh, this is before her. Yeah. That's, uh, so beauty school, bar, 21-year-olds, 35-year-olds, is a perfect match. <laughs> okay. So you have a past. You fully immersed yourself in the 21-year-olds. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so then you came along. Yes. Okay. Well, we went to this in seventh grade, but we never dated. Thank goodness. You guys have known each other since seventh grade? Yeah. yeah. I had no we, idea. We went to school together. Yeah, she was a math teacher. He barely passed. Please what? tell me that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Well, she's older than me, but. <gasps> where, where was Three weeks. <laughs> California. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we did have the same school. We graduated in the same class. Same year, everything. Wow. Well, but we did not socialize. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm glad I didn't meet Andrea when I was in school. We definitely would not have um, gotten along. Why? You were a jock. You were an I mean, you're still an You're just not a jock I was, anymore. I actually think I was probably way nicer back then. I don't believe oh. it. I've I've read those yearbook notes that those girls wrote you. <laughs> Why? Did, yeah, we broke out my yearbooks for a buddy of mine a couple of years ago, and because um, we didn't get our yearbooks at the same time as when you would do your signing, like with all your friends, because they mm. either weren't printed or whatever the case might be, and so we had like inserts. You you would walk around with your little couple page insert, and then when you got your yearbook, it had one of those glue strips. You like tear the thing away and then you just stick it into your yearbook. Hmm. And so what year was that? I graduated in 06. So 02. What year were you born? 87. <laughs> well, when, like, when you like, said 35, 2008, yeah. that was fresh out of high school. <laughs> so oh, you could you, have been you gone, going to school then too. You could have been going Yeah, school. but I was already getting 21. married. <laughs> I was already having babies, so no, I was not in hair school or going to bars underage. No, you're no one is the only one that hasn't been to a bar underage. Have you been to a bar? I think so. Yeah, you've taken me to a bar. You never went to a bar before. Oh, yeah, me? we've seen you guys at bars like Cape Fear. Mm -hmm. Cape Fear Seafood Locals. does not count as a freaking bar. It's a it's restaurant. But you, were, but you were sitting at the bar only because that's what he. It, 
he doesn't make reservations anywhere. It's just wherever is easier to sit. That's I not like true. I made reservations once or a couple times. Once. I mean, we had to make reservations at Rocco. We walked in like twice and got lucky. Okay. But uh, I made reservations at that uh, Greek restaurant. Have you guys been there? It's, um, what's it called? Oh my God, I'm blanking Keep- on what it's Keepos? called. Keepos? Yes. Is it off market? No, it's the in a Lumina, mm. Lumina, some the Lumina station. Lumina. Yeah. The Greek is the one we've been to. Greek. No, we haven't been to the Greek. It's really good, actually. Olympia is where we went. Oh, we both got one. like food poisoning. It was oh, terrible. Do you yeah. not recommend? Well, we they were to us right off the bat, and mm-hmm. we're like, this place is hmm. like a hole in the wall. We walked in there like we're busy. And you and then, reservations? No, no, not not a, there. Yeah. Oh. At keep at Kipos. Oh, so it's Lumina. Like yeah, everything at Lumina, you oh, need okay. reservations. Yeah, at, at Olympia, we walked in. I mean, this place looks like straight out of the seventies. And we walk in, and the hostess is like, oh, we're busy. And we're like, okay. And then another woman walks over. She's like, oh, sorry, she's new. And she's like, we have a table over here. And we're like, what is going on? And, well, she did apologize. She was like, I worked last Thursday, and Thursday is our busiest day. And we found out why, because it's like half price wine or something. Yeah. We didn't know that. Um, but apparently, that's when the old people come out. We were the, for the youngest half people in there by 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So she did apologize, at yeah. least. Yeah. But I, the food was terrible. I, I even made a comment um, to my friends on Facebook. I was like, do I just like misremember what Greek food is like? Because I had some friends that I went to high school that are Greek, and I've, mm-hmm. there's a lot of Greek restaurants where I'm from. I'm like, do I just misremember like being terrible, or is it just terrible? And they're like, no, you just went to a bad place. Then we went to keep us all that. Okay. Back on the map now. Greek food <laughs> is okay again. So where are you from? There's a big Greek population? Uh, I don't know if there's a big big population, but I know I went to a really big school and they're, I think I had like four or five friends and they, their families on, we had Greek fast food where I'm from. I mean, that's mm. Northern Indiana, South Bend, if you're familiar Euros. with that area. Yeah. Mm. There's actually a place called King Euros. Mm. That's the fast food chain, I guess. I don't know if it's a chain. I think it's only local in that area and there's like a handful of them. Mm. I like Greek food. It's done right. Very nice. Don't go to Olympia then, because it wasn't done right. <laughs> we and we sampled. We ordered like three or four things off the the sample menu, and then we each had. You some, mean appetizers? Yeah, same thing. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> the sample menu makes it sound like we went through Costco. <laughs> <laughs> cheap I mean, date. Cheap date. We could have. I mean. No. It's, oh my god. <laughs> that's actually that's a really good idea. <laughs> Restaurants should do that. <laughs> Restaurants should go to Costco and set up their little stand and do whatever their quick and easy little appetizer is as a way to get people to come to the restaurant. Costco, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. What? Anyways, so you guys were living in California and then you guys came out here to the East Coast. What made that decision? We had a couple of friends here. Yeah. That moved here in like 2010 or 12, something like this. Okay. More like this. So we came to visit them a few times. And you were done with the salon at this point? Oh, yeah. That was that was short-lived. It wasn't real. Okay. Um, but but you've continued waxing. Yes. Yeah. But only your wife? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Just my wife. You don't uh, take calls from the from the boys like, hey, going on a hot date tonight? I mean, I was thinking we could offer it like at the HOA meeting or something like that. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> Well, that, you only did that when the prison days with the boys. They oh, yeah, yeah. needed so, some help. So, so there's I'm two, sorry, what? There's two different kinds of wax, right? So this is hard wax. This is like the Cadillac of wax, right? Okay. So, okay. And then there's soft wax. But, so soft wax is like honey. Okay. So you get it warm and it never really... That's like it, what you see in movies where they use like, like the patches. Oh, really? Yeah, you, well, they, like, they put it on and, they t- and then they put, the, they put the paper on it, right? Mm-hmm. Or the, the, what's it called? Wax strip. The wax strip, yeah. It's like a, it's like a canvas. Okay. So, you, so you put the wax on, it's like warm honey. And then you put the wax strip on there and then you, you pull the the cloth, right? It's probably what everybody's used to kind of seeing. So with this hard wax, it gets super hard. You can just grab the edge of the wax and pull it up. You don't need a cloth. So I didn't really know the difference in waxes yet. So my buddy, he wanted his nose done, right? This is my first one. So he comes over before work, right? We're, you know, he's in his, we're on our way to work. Like he comes over early, we're like on our crop uniforms. And I lay him out on the massage table and I, I put the wax in his nose. And I'm like... And I got a stick right like this. I'm like, 
dude, this stuff isn't getting hard. Oh, no. And it's like running down <laughs> those nose. They're like, I'm like, so I'm trying not to panic, right? So like, if I panic, keep panic. So right, like, right. So I'm like, oh, so I'm like, just, maybe it just takes a little bit longer to, to get hard. So I mean, we went in two minutes, <laughs> right? This, this Every is, man has always said that, I'm this sure. This stuff gets hard in like <laughs> seconds, right? So we literally had like minutes. five minutes and then I, I pull the, the stick out of his nose and it's just like <gasps> bubble, a stringy bubble gum. And it's oh just like, holy God. so then we have to get like wax remover and we're like literally like, he's by this time he's like, you know, he's choking on it. Draining down his throat. Yeah. So we're just trying, trying to get it out of his nose and he's like laughing the whole time. And actually I'm going to send this episode to him because he'll probably think it's funny. Uh, but <laughs> then finally I figured out I had the wrong wax, right? So then what we did, we just got the hard wax, stuck it in there and it kind of bonded to the soft wax on me. You know, we got it out, but did you make him sign a liability waiver? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's like it's it's never well, like in war, it's never a war crime the first time. Yeah. So it's never Well, I wasn't licensed, so I'm never I'm still not licensed, so it's like there's no license to take away. So as long as you're not selling <laughs> it, then yeah. then no, no charging, right? Yeah, yeah. Free. Oh, for your pleasure. <laughs> Free torture. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's like the the up and coming or what they call them like journeyman tattoo artists who are like, Hey, if anybody wants a free tattoo, nope, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. Not coming to you for any free tattoo. I'm going to go to the well, guy. You can see the wax pot. It's, it's pretty, you know, it's not brand new. I mean, mm -hmm. I got a lot of experience now. It looks like, um, what they call them? Uh, Fondue. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Fondue. Is it the was, OG pot from 2008? This is the original one. This is like damn. Yeah. It's been with you since the beginning. I was thinking like those um, we oil. Can, we can turn it on though. Okay. Let's we'll just push the button down here. Yeah. I was thinking like those. Uh, what is that? That people sell like the candles with the, but not the candles like the the wax warmers. Fair, yeah. Fair. No, 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 for the scent. Oh, the scentsy or something. Sure. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's similar to that. Yeah. What's uh, like a wax pot? So you just it's the same same stuff. You just pour the little little chocolate chip looking beads in there and melt yeah, them. Don't them eat them, Andrew. I want to go on to. Yeah, to constipate you quick. How okay? Here's your your Q tip. How long does that take to warm up? Uh, a little while. I'll let you. I'll put that somewhere. Okay, <laughs> so it doesn't get dirty. So, I guess while we're waiting on that, we can talk about other random nonsense. Um, you guys moved here. And just went straight into real estate, or what did you do? When we you transferred started? our licenses here, yeah. And that so was we're licensed. I'm licensed in California still. Okay. So we go, we do, we go do a lot of business back and forth, commercial and residential. Well, I know you do like big time real estate. You got you're always showing big rich people around. Mm -hmm. You were talking about a, a judge. I don't, can we say that? I mean, we're not yeah, talking about his yeah, name. Yeah, but, we don't know. Him. Okay. I mean, yeah. So, what do you what do you think is the difference between basically taking around showing these people high high dollar um, customers clients like what what do you think is the difference between that and somebody like Nona and I who are going to nitpick everything about everything because we're poor? Oh, they nitpick. You think as much or more? Um, it's the same. same. Poor people, yeah. It's just they're just less stressed out, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the nitpicking doesn't. It's I don't want to say it's a nitpicking, but it's. You know, people have like their personal objections, like they call mm -hmm. them, right? Everybody's got those. Um, what he likes, what she likes. It's like, you know, trying to find that right house, getting people on the same page. It's just, you know, sometimes tough. What's the wildest situation that you've encountered in real estate? Mm. We just sold a mobile home park a couple years ago. Okay. And, uh, with the people still in it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the yeah. tenants were still there. All the there. tenants in place, yeah. So we, we these guys from a hedge fund, and they're like, they, I, for, oh, we think it's kind of a fake deal in the beginning, but we, I had the listing. A fake deal? Well, you, we didn't know if, the, if he was a real buyer, right? Oh. Because he was cash. He's like, okay. says he can close it in you know, a week and all this stuff, mm -hmm. which is a big dollar amount. Right. So we go back and forth for like three days and it goes like radio silent. And then the guy calls us on New Year's Eve. They're like, well, it's New Year's Eve day. We're driving to Lake Norman. It's like 11 o'clock in the morning. He's like, I got to do this deal. I got to close it tonight by midnight. Okay. And I'm like. Like I haven't heard from you. Where are you? Like a New Year's Eve party. <laughs> right. Like, we're friends and hang out. 
So I ended up locking myself in the room all night. And we literally were on the phone with the attorneys, the buyers and the sellers until like literally we closed it. At like he, they finally signed at like 1150 at night because they needed to spend the money before New Year's for the tax deduction. All That's stuff, right? what I was going to uh, guess. So what they ended up doing was holding back like 250 grand in escrow, you know, so they can keep negotiating, you know, for the next couple weeks, they can do their inspections and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but that was the, it was, it was honestly the, one of the fastest deals we've ever done. It was just, it was on a bad night. Really. Right. Yeah. Um, you missed out on a party. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, she, yeah. <laughs> but you made lots of money, right? We did. Yeah. It was, so it was worth it. Yes. Yeah, it was a big, 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 big And then big you celebrated day. the next day? I always celebrated for like a whole year after that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> then we started working again. Then, yeah, yeah. Then the money ran out. <laughs> was that out here or back in? It was here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What about, kind of, oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, it kind of reminds me that um, they were talking about that at the track a couple weeks ago about buying the motorhome, whatever. Uh, oh, RV yeah. Park. She was yeah. doing an RV park yeah. or something. Yeah. Those are good. Really? Yeah. Mm hmm. How, how lucrative is that? Like, because there can't be much off, there be not much maintenance cost other than you figure landscaping. Been, you figure each space is going to make two or three grand a month, each okay. space, right? Okay. So most of those parks have 100 to 300 spaces, right? I mean, just do the math, I mean, right? Interesting. Yeah, and, and they're looked at, like most of them, all, I mean, we have friends that they thought they were gonna go RVing, mm -hmm. and uh, they Airbnb their house for the summer, they get in their RV to figure out that between North Carolina and Florida, they can't even find a place to park their RV because it's all full. Oh, wow. Right, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So if you build one, I mean, it'll be, it'll be full. Sounds like people that do the storage complexes and stuff too. Very similar. Like these race car guys, right? Yeah. So they race four or five months out of the year and the rest of the year they just RV. I've always wondered, so like I understand um, Chris and um, I'm blanking on his wife's name. Like Sarah. Yeah. I understand them like RVing and, and doing all that because they are doing everything. They're also the mechanics. They're also the marketers. Like they're, but I kind of wonder because I actually know a guy that races NASCAR Truck Series, and he's always, always, always asking for sponsors on Facebook and stuff. Like I wonder once you get to like, I think it's still called the Cup Series, like the the high end, like mm -hmm. Jeff Gordon and stuff like that used to race in. Like, do they actually ride in the RV or the bus, or do they? fly home and then fly to the track to practice and race and then fly home. And I fly. think those guys probably fly all out. They have like probably private jets and stuff. I think it's their crews yeah. that drive all that around. Man. And they probably stay the night, like a three night race in one of those things. Yeah. But, you know, or they go to a nearby hotel, I would guess. You would have to like really want to do that, to do that for 10 months <laughs> out of the year, every year. It's their life. They yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, grew up, a lot of those kids grew up in that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's generational, right? It's all they kind of. But I mean, working on somebody else's car, like a, a lot of people get into something like that, thinking, "Oh, I'll be the next, you know, fill-in substitute driver or whatever." But how many of that actually happens? The the what my buddy was telling me, and I think Chris actually also talked about this, is that it's how well you can market yourself. And I know that that's, it's that way for at least the lower tier in NASCAR. It's how many people do you know? How much money you, can you raise for your team? Mm -hmm. And so if you're just a guy pulling tires off during pit stops, mm -hmm. how, how many people are you going to get to back you and sponsors and stuff to slap their label on your car? Well, a lot of those guys at the top level, they're like, um, it's a very athletic position, right? Ripping yeah. tires off cars are a lot of the guys that, we're going into the NFL, right? And they're like, you know, they're fast guys, and so they transitioned to this NASCAR like pit crew type position. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Some of the stuff that they show about about those guys trying out. To I saw I was those drills and I was watching a video about Ferrari and F1 the other day, and they were showing the routine. They actually everybody gets up together before you know race day and try, time trials or uh, qualifying and everything like that. And they all get together, they all do stretching, calisthenics, and then they go through mm -hmm. and they practice their routine and time because they have to do, it's like two seconds. Mm -hmm. They do an entire pit, 
fuel and change all four tires in two seconds. Could you do that, Andrew? No. You couldn't either. But they they have. I mean, a lot of those races are one in one within seconds. Right? Yeah. So yeah. the pit, pit crews matter, right? I mean, yeah. But they, they have like a singular like lug on their wheels. And I think NASCAR just went to that recently or they're going to it or something. Because they used to have to do like four or six or whatever it was. And so they just have one giant one. So you have a guy dedicated to everything. And they're in a three hour long race where they're going to change your tires four or five times. So your entire job is 10 seconds out of a three hour day. But those 10 seconds matter. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, you're just standing there the rest of the time. And I I would just, I, I feel like I'd be so bored. Maybe I wouldn't, maybe I'd be excited because I'm right there watching the race, but a lot of racetracks, because the pits are down, you know, in the middle and you're facing one side of the track, you don't even get to see the majority of the race. Mm-hmm. It's not like being up in the stands or even in the middle. I went to um, um, Long Long Beach, something out in California, when I was in elementary school. I went in place of my dad. Because pre-9-11, you could kind of just get away with anything. I flew with my dad's ticket because we had the same middle name. And his middle name was what was on the ticket. And so I flew with my mom, all my dad's friends, and it's whatever their um, Indy car Formula One track is that's on like a small island out there. Hmm. It's like Long Beach or some. I, I don't think Long Beach is the right thing. But anyways, so uh, we get there, and my dad's business partner's friend is like, you know, big, GM for Hyatt or Hilton, one of the two. And they actually have a hotel that's in the middle of the track. So we watch the race from the roof of the hotel instead of like in the stands. Mm. Then we had uh, passes to go back uh, mm. through the pits. Go for it. We had passes to go back to the pits. And uh, you know who Walter Payton was, right? Oh, yeah, I got to meet him. and. Got a Polaroid picture taken with him because he owned a team at the time. Is it hot and ready? That's okay. No. I want to make him cry. No. <laughs> I mean, you might be choking on that one. You turn it off. What is there like a ideal? We have a laser thermometer. Oh, <laughs> do you know a temperature though, or do you just know it by consistency? Okay. How long does it take to cool down? Probably like five, ten minutes. Okay. I should All right. So you guys work together, obviously. Mm-hmm. You guys live together. Mm-hmm. You guys have been married for how many years? Eleven years. A little over eleven years now. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Do you yeah. ever get sick of each other? No, not at no, all. Live together, work together. You guys do that too, don't you? Twenty four seven. I mean, you know, so you know what it's like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, twenty four seven. So, what do you do just for yourself? We wax. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, "Hey, I'm bored. Why don't you come strip down and I'll wax you real quick?" <laughs> <laughs> Not it's it. because you want to inflict a little bit of pain because you're just. That little bit annoyed with her and just seeing her flinch, you're like, okay, no, now I can me, let it go. Now I can me, let it go. Pulling them out one by one with a pair of tweezers. Which I do. Which she does. I do that on my own. I'm like, shit. How long does that take? It's like a long time, right? She does I'm that with sorry, her eyes. What? I tweeze everything, what I what I can reach. Oh, yeah. you meant one at a time. Yeah. Why? Why not? <laughs> They don't. It doesn't grow back. Then you don't have to wax stuff. Like right now, I have but like just just wax. Yeah, but like I only have like you know like four hairs now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, well, then, after, yeah. She's not hairy. I have to like actually let them grow to like see like oh there is something right there. It's like, like tweets from right. It's like nothing. I'm just mind boggled. No, well, you just like sit there in front of the mirror and with the bright lights, and you're like twing 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 twing. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't do that if I was in that situation. I probably would, but... What situation? If I only had, like, two or three. Uh, I was thinking it was, like, 
72 oh, individual, <laughs> individual, individual, but I guess like, like this? if you've yeah. been, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. At that point, just wax. Yeah. Don't yeah. do it yeah. individually. Oh, she does. She does it to me. You see, I have like one or two little grays yeah. in there. I'd be sitting on the couch watching a movie or something. She's like, it's bothering me. She'll reach and rip it out of my face or sit there. Well, she should. You're it. welcome. I think you're sitting with that one. That one's like, ooh, you're one. welcome. That's Thank you. The nose one. Beefy. <laughs> Yeah. You're saying it's gonna hurt? Yes. No, it's just, just, when they're gray. It's just like I could probably curl that one. I love that you're getting excited about it. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna What's get in there with the white. I can go get one. Yeah. Are you trying to save that? them? Well, no. Well, you, I mean, you guys want to keep them until you can you can show them the so on your next show, right? Are we auctioning off you your nose hairs? And, and you give it to people, and let them like kind of guess what that is, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's over there like. Well, I don't then we're <laughs> so we, we like none of the first times we did it we, we took it we had a big blue so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pause this real quick so. all right we're back sorry about you guys could continue laughing and stuff no. um sorry the did you get the with, ziploc baggie no, he was not down for that did you not see his face what are we gonna do we have to put it in something we really need to say we're not as well. That's why I asked you if I should grab a towel mm -hmm. while I was out. No, no, it's a black bag you're expressed. Okay. All right. So we did one one time, right? It was a. It was a. Well, well, the story was you were waxing me. The full. Yeah, the full. Wax. Oh, yeah, you so told us this. I'm sitting there yeah. on my back like a dead bug with legs up and stuff. And he's just doing my bikini line. He's going everywhere. And then he's all of a sudden, he's like over my butthole. I'm like, oh! I'm like, I'm gonna blow a bubble. Hurry, pull it off. He's like, nope, now you gotta wait until it dries. <laughs> and then that's how we ended up with a patch. Yeah, it's like, and it's bright, bright blue, right? And it's kind of, you'll see it's kind of nice looking. Um, <laughs> and, and you and still then, have it? No, no, we put it in a bag and then we took it to, we took it to our family's house for Christmas, right? Oh my God! And we, and we passed it around the room. So like my brother, my mom, my stepdad, they're like, they're like oh, they're trying to guess what it is, right? And, yeah. uh, and I'm like, I can't even tell them what it is now. It's, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, but, they were probably hoping for like a pregnancy announcement or some other kind no, of no, no, we're, joyous. We're, we're both fixed. We, yeah, we're we're fixed. both fixed. No, 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 I just mean like <laughs> they were like excitement coming out of this. But no, it's your it's booty a, hole. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> it's looking like a balloon now. I'm hearing it. Like a, oh, wax, right? like a pop. <laughs> look at this precious gem that I found on my vacation to wherever. And then you look closer at it and you see hair and that that's that when it's weird. Remember that? Was it silly putty? Yeah. That stuff yes. for, that's kind of what it's like. Okay. But it's like a nice, vibrant blue, right? So, I'm so excited for this heart. to happen. <laughs> nice, heart. vibrant blue butthole snapshot. And yeah. you still have it or no? No, no, no. We auctioned it off. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you made lots of money on your OnlyFans. No, the adventure was threw it away. <laughs> Did the okay? Uh, what? No, I bet you auctioned it. No, nobody wanted to touch it. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> like a potato. I, I cannot I believe you took it to your to family. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> yeah. So how when when you uh, lather it onto the little popsicle stick? Mm -hmm. How long does it have to sit in my nose for? Like a minute. Okay. Yeah. And you're probably just gonna like lean back and play in that chair and like just rest your head in it. Like right here. And breathe through your mouth. Yeah, breathe through your mouth. Not through your nose, yeah. And relax. Ugh. He's a mouth breather really anyway, nice. so he'll be fine. I'm only I only because I have deviated septum. Oh, you can't breathe through your mouth? I can breathe through my nose, but it's difficult. It's just easier to breathe through both. No, mm -hmm. you're definitely a mouth we breather. Can do one at a time. No, he he can breathe. Yeah, I'm exactly. saying he's, he's a mouth. A mouth. He's a mouth breather I'm already. Not a mouth breather. He's got a mouth to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so shut, unfortunately. I'm not Deadpool. I'm not Ryan Reynolds. Unfortunately. Which, by the way, uh, I don't know why I just thought about this. Jake yeah. Jake oh. Cutler was just arrested for uh, DUI and possession of a firearm. Jay Cutler. You, how do, you knew who his wife. How does was. that have anything to do with Ryan Reynolds? I don't know. <laughs> I just came to mind. I. I saw it right after we filmed the other episode. We were literally talking about criminals, and I'm like, this would have been a really good story. Really timely, yeah. yeah. Well, sucks to be him. How much is that? How much time's that got? Give me one minute. Okay. All get right. Me, get me hyped up now. Yeah. 
Andrew, Andrew, I mean, you're, Andrew. You're gonna, like, it's gonna ch- probably change your life because you're gonna you're gonna be like every ninety days. And like, can you come over here to the spot again? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe important. we'll have to invest in one, and maybe I'll let him wax me. Well, as soon as I see this table, I was thinking like, this is really the size of the table you really need to do the full job. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then as soon as people see us do that on here, we're going to be like, hey, come over for dinner. Maybe, no. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, they might. I mean, people are weird. <laughs> if we get some people coming over and start licking our table, I'm going to know it's a problem. Because <laughs> they're into hairy balls. I don't know if this table would hold you guys. It's solid legs, but not the center with the yeah. weight on it. Us girls I don't know. It's, it's evenly dispersed <laughs> if you lay down. I don't know, maybe. What's pretty solid? It's a pretty decent table. Mm-hmm. For the fact that we bought a world market. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a world market special. It's one yeah. piece. There's yeah. no like leaf. Yeah, no. So, you guys were telling some good stories prior. Can we talk about any of that stuff? What stuff? Which one? The stuff we were talking about over there when we were snacking before the show. About my appointments today? All, all the boob warranties. Oh, and- oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Boob warranties and... My first time and which for anybody else confused i was confused too but apparently you can get warranty on your breast implants no no didn't even know that no idea is it th- is it through the surgeon your insurance or the manufacturer the manufacturer, the manufacturer for your implants offer mm-hmm. the warranty and it so, just comes with it that I'm, i think so I'm maybe not. you have one and just nobody right, told that's you. what i'm saying i have no idea you have one everybody's got one it's like a car. It's like anything you buy. You're going to have a warranty. Are, are, are you thinking of a warranty claim? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, how old are they? Two years old. Oh, so I think they're at least 10 probably, right? I mean. Yeah, I think they're 10 years for most of Google is. Oh, my. What's a silicone? What's a boob warranty? <laughs> warranty look like. <laughs> and it's just the product, right? It's not the Not the services. Surgeries. How it's long is a breast implant warranty good for? Breast implant warranties vary by manufacturer and type of implant. Here's a general overview. Lifetime implant replacement. Most manufacturers offer lifetime replacement for rupture or deflation. Financial assistance. Coverage for revision surgery due to rupture or other complications varies, typically ranging from 10 to 20 years. Capsular contracture. Some warranties offer coverage for capsular contracture, usually for a shorter period. It's got way more information. I was going to let her read all of it. Yes. Well, it sounds like lifetime, right? For if it's defective, right? They have, she knows all, everything down to the different manufacturers and what like their normal ones are. So this is, this is useful sometimes. Sometimes, I asked not her, every time. I asked her earlier about jury nullification and it kept saying, I don't know who Jerry Null is. Mm. Like that's not what I asked you. And she thinks I have a speech impediment or something. I did not say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I'm joking. Mm-hmm. So, um, you found out the w- the way you told the story was best. That's basically what I'm getting at. I just can't recall that. <laughs> so I followed my third set. So my first set, when I went in for my mammogram, my first time, it was ruptured. Of course, the doctors don't tell you that. They just tell you to talk to your doctor. It's their responsibility to identify it. So I went in, well, we went in and it was, um, I wanted to go bigger anyways, so I told the doctor, when you open me up, take him out, identify if it's like ruptured or not, and I'll I have to, it comes out of your pocket anyways. So either you're gonna get some money back or you're just not gonna get no money back. So they put new ones in, it was ruptured, I was gonna get money back. That was when they were replaced for the first time being ruptured, and it was just on the right-hand side. Um, they've had an easy life, don't know why, it ruptured, it just was. And then my second pair, my doctor and his nurse, which were two men, um, the doctor was a, ner- a male and the nurse was a male, then they fought to get the implants back in. And I remember him saying, specifically, he was lucky to have a male nurse because it was hard to get the implants in and they struggled with it. Weeks later, I had another rupture because I only had a leak, an infection that was coming out of my chest. But they hit it with a needle. They had it. When they were sewing her back. We had to, they, he had to have caught it with a needle when there's everything was super tight. Right. So they had to have caught it with a needle. And I think I pulled on the, the stitch somehow with my arms, 
going around like an uh, putting my arm around somebody when I, I went ahead and ripped it out. Right. And then a couple of days later, an infection was there. And the infection came out by a leak going down my belly. That's how it that happened. How many cc's did you start with and how many cc's did you end up with? Um, it was 400, 600, 600, I think. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was 400, 600, 600. And you're tiny, so yeah. 600 is pretty big. Yeah. So, so I can see how they struggled. It's like the size of a volleyball, yeah. right? And yeah. That's a lot. The When she got hers redone two years ago, we were sitting in the uh, like the pre-op room or whatever when she was getting prepared. And um, they had like the sample of it and it was half the size of the one she was getting. So I was like, I don't even know how to, what to compare this to. This isn't the right size. Well, every girl that gets them always wants them bigger. That's, I've like heard a, that. Within a year, like about a year later, they're like, ah, oh, these need to be bigger. Well, she said that on your initial one. Yeah, you so on my initial one, um, I had gone from an A cup naturally to nursing four children. And I was beyond a, like a spilling over triple D. I'm sure I was larger than that. I just, you know, was buying bras, not even getting measured. Um, and then obviously I went back to an A when I was done nursing. So there was a lot to fill up. I went to the surgeon and I said very clearly, I just want to be a full D. I don't maybe even just a or even a small D, full C. Sorry, that's what I actually asked for. He tried to give that to me, and his nurses said, that's not enough. There's still a lot to fill up. So he put me back down on the table, put more in, and I ended up leaving uh, triple D, I believe. So I was pretty much back to what I was, but there was still extra. So that's why I went back um, a this, couple this years. This is the second set. This is the second well, set. Uh, I now, uh, pardon? You also had a mass. It was a two for one kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did have to have a biopsy and everything the two years ago. So I figured I would do the same thing. Um, just get it all taken care of at the same time, um, which everything came back non-cancerous, which was good. That's very good. Um, but yeah, now I have 800 cc. Each? Yes. Seven ninety five. Whatever. Seven ninety five. <laughs> I went right under eight hundred. Well, my first set when I went in to see my doctor, I was hundred and seven pounds, and I told him I don't want to see my feet. That's how I came up with the four hundred. <laughs> so wow. he's like, "Okay, I don't think you see your feet." I'm like, "Well, I don't. Well, I can still see them if I bend over and look." He's like, "Well, sit that up straight," and I did, and I couldn't see them. So I'm like, "Okay." So they lasted for seven years until it ruptured, and then. Um, they got two new pairs after that. No, that's <laughs> Under good. Under warranty. You need to find out if you have a warranty now. I'm sure I do. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know anything about it. Was your surgeon here or one of the surgeons here? No, I'm not over here. On the West Coast. <laughs> at home. Was she, you said you didn't like the first one and the second one you did like or no? Mm, I haven't found a surgeon that I'm happy with yet. But it was also here in Wilmington. And right. Mm -hmm. So my first surgeon was in Charlotte. I found him to be a complete <laughs> but um, whatever. I feel like all surgeons are kind of arrogant. Uh, yeah, very mm -hmm. arrogant. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, but anyways, anyways, I think it's time to rip those nose hairs out. Should have poured a shot. Are you yeah. telling me that's what I need to do? You need to prepare too. yourself. You don't, you don't need a Deep shot. Ice. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay, now you guys are all making a big deal about this. Now This I'm is awesome. Just try to, get, to keep it out of the way. Beard, everything else. Yeah, See, you this, is, this is why we need um, people Here, producing. Your baggie. This is why we need oh, yeah, people. Baggie. Larry, don't dribble it anywhere. We need people producing the show for us because it's for more than twenty years. By the way, it's, it's been that long. Oh, yeah. Damn. I feel it. Two thousand eight was not twenty years ago. We're getting close, but well, it's guess, only two thousand twenty-four. Okay. Again, okay. He's not good please, please don't age yeah. me. I mean, when I think about how long ago I joined the army, it does feel like a lot longer ago than. Oh yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Get in there. I'm so excited. Comfortable? Back further. There you go, right there. Look at how big his nostrils are. Actually, not that big. Really? Well, this one is. They're massive. They're different sizes. What? Well, isn't that normal? Around. You're not going to do like the hair on his, his like... Huh? You just did the, the you just did like a rim job onto the nostrils. Is that what you did? So cute. So here we go, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> that good? Far back as you can get it. Okay. You got blow on it. No, no, you gotta talk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just over here mesmerized by the fact that you are not only agreed to do this. Great is the keyword. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh my god. Didn't sign a liability waiver. Oh, oh it's all in your all in your mustache. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy's missing out on a mustache now. Good job, Good job breathing. <laughs> oh it's warm. Very Andrew. Like, it feels like I have a nosebleed. That's warm. Andrew, no, you look like you're about like, to give birth I'm over there. How it feels to the Kind of like, like yeah, breathe through those contractions over there, Andrew. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's already a blow on it. You wear a bubble. I'm not doing that anymore because I don't want to lose my muscles. <laughs> Is it dripping it'll, down my throat? Is it dripping right here? Come on. Damn it. Is it? Okay. Did you think it was on your cheek? It feels like it's at the top of my mustache. I'm like, so that's all I was asking. Um, I do not want Andrew to be beardless. I don't think I would continue to be married to him if he was. So don't don't get rid of that I'll thing. Have to go to the. I think you need to lean back further. Like. All right. Do I need to like stand behind you and like hold your head? Hey y'all. Maybe blow on his nostril. Okay. There. Okay. Yeah, blow on the nostril. Right. Just so it stays up out of the. Yeah. There we good. Hey. Yeah, don't Great job. Great like, job. Yeah. Just breathe that in. Yeah. That's an easy. Good job. Good job. There you go. It's hardening up. It's like picking a booger. So my how dog, long? Bella came here to. All right, you good? I guess I don't know. All I right, guess I don't. I don't have a choice at this point, right? That's what you gotta get involved in. Yeah, I'm gonna do everything. Do you want to get to Yankwan? Have you done it before? No, I've never. I mean, done never. It. You gotta like, and you can't like let your hand. You gotta like, don't. You can't let your hand slip, right? You gotta like make sure you get it all the way out. But do this side first. But yeah. No, it's fine. You do it. It's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it. Um, yep. On five. One, two, three. I knew you were going to do that. Oh my God. It's like a. Did it hurt? <laughs> not as bad as I expected, but it's like one of those things where. It's so cute. Let me see it. Don't put it. Don't squish it yet. It's like a little mini Christmas tree. Aww. With some ornaments. Uh, fuck. <laughs> ah. Can you guys. No, you okay. can't see. Oh. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I see. You definitely got more on the first in. one than on the that second one. Minimal so tears. Clean. Minimal tears. So clean. Yeah. And you still got your mustache. Nobody can even see. That's why I was saying we need a production crew because then somebody could have been there. I almost grabbed my phone, you but we it's put all that the way in. over there. Oh, yeah, I can feel my like eye watering. I mean, see how fast it's like. Yeah. It wasn't. It definitely. Okay. For anybody that wants to get it done, mm -hmm. definitely go to him. No, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I meant. I meant. Or okay. Oh well, my wife, she's licensed. A, a Larry <laughs> or A Corey. <laughs> because I only did it because you're my friend and you begged me. Well, you gave me tequila and said, "Go ahead." <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't okay. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Doesn't hurt well, just to pull them out one by one, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. When she does it. I just, I use the I've little. I've never done your nose hair crazy. You, there's been a couple of times when you've been like, we'll be. I just can't get over how like clean it is now. It's, it's a big difference. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, his were like long. Well, they would, they would, they literally like spider out of his nostrils. Yeah, I know. I try, I tried to hold it up, and I did. Oh wow! Mm. It's like a. It's, it's like a little out forest of a horror movie. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> forest. It's like little spiky. Yeah, but you need to be careful. Um, we don't want our followers to like make a shrine for you with that. Why not? Why not shrine? Standing like those people that have like in their closet. Like you'd be so, a lot of people get this, and this isn't like something new. Like people just don't talk about it, right? I you should probably like ask your people like how many of you have done this, right? Yeah. How many of you have had your nose waxed or your ears waxed or anything or your butthole chest. waxed? <laughs> back, yeah. armpits, chest, back. So the the first thing I thought was forty year old virgin. Oh yeah. Because th and that's when you were talking about the, the soft wax strips, wax or yeah, whatever. Yeah. That like seeing that, and I just I've never had that done, but I know that I know what that pain felt like. If that makes sense. Like I, as soon as I saw it happen in the movie, in my mind, I knew what that had to. And next time it won't hurt. It, it's it gets. Did, did, I mean, did it hurt? He always says no. that. I mean, I told her that, I was going to. That would be the worst it would ever be, right? But you just felt so. Like, after that, next time, because those those follicles are like. I mean, and you just buy this like, off the shelf, like at a. No, you gotta have a license. Ah, yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. So you can't just get like some candle wax. No. No. Oh my that's God. Soft wax. Is it? Well, I mean, I guess it gets hard, but yeah, no, no, no. That, that's that's designed for skin, and yeah. God, uh yes, because it's not going to have anything, and it's yeah. going to irritate your pores, or yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. But I bet you there's still people that try. There's somebody out there. I bet you there's some. There's somebody, probably in the military. There's probably some marine at Camp Lejeune right now, <laughs> getting ready for the weekend because this is Friday for us when we're recording this, guys. Um, probably in the room in the barracks with their buddies. Hey man, I saw this thing on YouTube. <laughs> Let's wax my butthole. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I, it's, I, I guarantee somebody is doing it. There, there, there was a there's a like a rule of thumb. What are they called? There's there's a. Have you ever heard of Rule Thirty Four? Mm. No. It's like a really skeezy thing from uh, 4chan, 8chan, like the dark armpit of the internet, where the what rule 34 means is if it exists, there's porn for it. Oh, my God. So anything you can think of. So if, there's nose hair rippage porn. Probably. There's butthole rippage porn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Y'all yeah. are nasty. You know who I learned that from? The Streeters. I didn't know what that was, and I looked up the website. Don't go to that website. Why would you look it up? Because I, I thought they were... Because you were interested in the no. random porn? No, I thought they were making... You know who the Streeters are, right? They lived in Mallory Creek, too, or live in Mallory Creek. Is that the dog treat people? Dog... Tr not treat. Um, trainer. Dog treat? Are you, are you referring to somebody, like the inside joke? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you told me about it. What am I forgetting? What? The dog treat cam. Oh no 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 no. Um, that's what? they're in uh, the other neighborhood next to the We're one. Talk about it, but <laughs> yeah. dog treat cam. I don't know what's happening. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, I don't want to say their names. Remember the neighborhood? <laughs> the neighborhood that we met him. Or went to walk through that house that he was showing a couple a couple of years ago. Yeah, and the neighborhood that's adjoined to it. Okay, that you have friends that live in there. Okay, you'll remember later. They have a nice house in Waterford. Okay, the nanny cam. Oh, oh I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand the dog treat. Treats. No, 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 no. That's that you made that up. Well, we can oh. we can tell the story now that we haven't said the names. Oh, well, I, I, okay. want the, I want the dog treat cam. Oh yeah, no, it's not a dog treat cam. They were training their puppy, and they had a small camera pointed at the crate, and so it was just a small puppy cam oh, not dog treat that's why i was completely uh, lost so what are we talking about dog treat i thought you were saying like 
somebody who made dog treats was being like shady and weird or whatever. Yeah, Anyways, those machines that you know they shoot yeah. the treats out. Yes, so I know what you're camera. talking about for the that. Ones you can the dog you can teach it to hit the buttons and do it. Yeah, yeah. But you the can, story apparently we're going to share it yeah, is they mm-hmm. forgot that they had a camera set up pointed at the dog and the dog kennel or what crate, whatever, when they invited another couple into their bedroom. So the camera caught their first foursome experience and then they got to relive it multiple times over when they also got chlamydia. Uh (laughs) So funny related story that just hit the news recently. It's not shark and it's not, um, what's the other one? The other iRobot. It's not those two. There's another brand okay. that has a robot vacuum that has a camera, but apparently speaker and microphone as well. And the company that manufactured them, uh, the security for like, once it's connected to your network to view like the live camera on it, which why do you want to view a live camera of your vacuum when you're away from home? It's kind of. Yeah, that's unless weird. Unless you can control unless them. Unless you're like your super dog. OCD. Yeah. yeah. You didn't get that crumb. Yeah. Go back over there. <laughs> so apparently security <laughs> researchers have told them multiple times that, hey, it's really unsecure because it's like a four-digit pin to unlock it. Yeah. There's not very many combinations for somebody to brute force. Okay. And then when suddenly people had their robots chasing them around their house, screaming <laughs> slurs and obscenities at them. <laughs> when did this happen? Just like last week. Oh my God. Yeah. And what brand? I don't, I don't know. I didn't recognize it. But it's not the big it. one? No. It's not no. Roomba? It's not Ninja? No. Gotcha. Mm. <laughs> that's mm. funny. Yeah. I mean, they're, that's not funny, but that's funny. They were like, the, the reports were like the, the robot was chasing them around, like screaming racial slurs. And they're like, oh my God. <laughs> what is going on? And they thought, they thought it was, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know if it was hacked. They didn't right. know if it was broken. They didn't know whatever. And then come to find out the company came out and said, yeah, it was a breach. And all they had to do basically was it, it takes a computer like mine. Even that little computer right there could run through all four digit combinations like in a second. It doesn't take that much effort. That's why password strengths are, you know, ridiculous and biometrics and all that stuff. But yeah, as soon as I I heard that story and I was like, people are going to start one day. People are going to start taking me seriously. The things that I post online, and I'm like, hey, you guys should do this. And everybody's like, no, it's okay. It's never happened to me. Your robot's going to start chasing you around, cussing at you, and yeah. Well, round of applause to Andrew for getting his nose hairs ripped out. Nice and clean. So yes. Thank you. you. Seriously. I can Thank bre- you. I can breathe better. I can breathe better. So, so maybe you need to make this a regular thing, which, by the way, before you guys came over, he was like, um, I've never seen a waxing place here in Wilmington. It, do you guys even have waxing here? And I was like. Oh, you're going to start seeing them all over the place. Andrew, you can literally get waxed anywhere from the nail salon, the hair salon, waxing studios. Waxing. Exactly. And I was like, it, right across the street from Roku, you have, we've parked in front of it. Roku? Roku. Roku. In Mayfair. Uh, Italian. Mm. It's delicious. Do you know, you know what she's talking about now? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, do you know where that indoor golf place, pizza, no, I've uh, seen okay. Show. Five Guys. It's at the it's the other corner where Five Guys is. Mm, I don't go there too much, actually. It's the one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very small little place. You don't watch TV. You don't go to Mayfair. You sell houses. That's yes. all you do. I work and I wax and go on vacation. <laughs> and you wax. Yes. Okay. Yes. You guys do go on vacation. So three three things. And we have four animals, so we're constantly taking care of them. And they're always in my face too. <laughs> So well, that's, I'm glad she knew. She knew. She was like, yeah. "My mommy's not here. I'm yeah. gonna get in your face now." Mm-hmm. So, so you feel you're kind of like, I think you like that. You're like glowing, <laughs> glowing. No. Aww. <laughs> so I made a bet with Ross Patterson from Drinker Bros Podcast years ago because he's an Ohio State fan. I'm a Michigan fan. So every year for the Michigan Ohio State game, he would have a bet with a Michigan fan. The fan, disgusting. the fan prior to me fell off for some reason, didn't like they, there's like a, they would have like a hundred dollar max on like what the prize was or something. And it would be something I had to buy him a, um, 
what are those starter jacket? I had to buy him mm -hmm. a I had to buy him a starter jacket one year. Um, so we had the bet for several years, and then the last year that we were going to do it, uh, JT from Black Rifle was in town, and a couple of people were on the show, and JT being if you guys think like I'm obnoxious and in, uh, interrupt Nona and stuff all the time, JT is me like turned to eleven. No, thank you. I'm sorry. I don't ever want to meet this on, person. On the show. On the show. He yeah, plays I don't the character on the show. Person. He's not that kind of person off the screen. JT's an awesome guy. Super smart. Sure. Yes. Okay. So he blurts out, will you do the diaper bet? No. And before I even know what the diaper bet is, I was like, sure. JT and Dan are like, what? I'm like, I don't know what that is, but sure, whatever. And Ross is like, no, I'm not doing that. And that was the first time I had seen him get worried about potentially losing the bet. Do you guys know what the diaper bet is? No. Do you know what it is? You explained it to me, which is why I already started okay. this with disgusting. So what the diaper bet is, the loser has to change the diaper of the winner who their diaper. Disgusting. So you wear a diaper until you it, and then the loser has to change it. Disgusting. I think both disgusting. parties disgusting. loses on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I think that was actually the year that we ended up doing the starter jacket, but haven't had one after that with him. Michigan's won every year since then. That's so. because he blocked you. Well, he blocked me because, because Mis Michigan won because, because I didn't know he was in the hospital when Michigan won and I blew up his phone laughing at him, not knowing he was in the hospital. So who their pants? Nobody ended up doing it. Oh, that was, he so asked you me just to sit there and tell someone their pants. No, no. So the loser, has like you would I don't know I guess you would set up a day or be like okay I'm gonna put on a diaper I'm gonna <laughs> myself and then you have to come over and change it or whatever I don't disgusting we didn't get into the fine details I just uh -huh. know the high level overview of the winner themselves the loser changes their diaper oh <laughs> not it no even with what you did to your family well, that's clean <laughs> that's still it was in a, it was in a baggie yeah, okay yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> You didn't make them take it out, no, sniff they, it. They didn't have to sniff it. They okay. Didn't, yeah. That doesn't smell like anything anyway. Yeah. Now I'm actually rethinking about this. I wonder what the other potential things JT might have come up with. Like, if if diaper bet was the maximum, like what were the next several steps down? Like, what would if that was a ten? What would JT consider a nine or an eight? Booty hole waxing. I don't know. I guess I can text him and ask him. Okay. What would have been fine. the next thing that you said other than diaper bet? But there, Nasty. there. If you guys, if you guys do ever, because I know you said you don't ever watch podcasts or listen to podcasts. If you do ever decide to, you can watch or listen to his podcast. It's called Time for Pie, and it's just random, obscure nonsense. They made up something uh, called horse Wi-Fi. There's not people. You know, because glue is made from horses and all this other stuff. They have the most random off the wall nonsense. They ended up getting a cease and desist from the FCC because apparently people were looking, trying to figure out how to buy horse wife. That's funny. Yeah. They, they just posted about it a, a couple of weeks ago. They, they actually posted the cease and desist letter and they're like, I guess the FCC is not fans. Well, wow. okay. Yeah. Good to know. So that's that's what we need to do. No next. horse Wi-Fi allowed. We need to offend the FCC, some other three-letter agencies, not the ATF, because I don't want them no, killing our dogs. No, we don't need to offend any of the three-letter agencies. We don't need them knocking on our door, sending us letters, anything. No, offend, don't do anything illegal. Just offend them. No. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. I'll still find a way to do it. Ah! <laughs> Maybe start with the HOA. Yeah. <laughs> That's his favorite. Did you see the video that I posted? The, no. the uh, light show? <clears throat> this guy, I, I don't know what his origin is. I ended up, because he put his little tagline at the bottom of the video, so I looked him up. Um, he does like these, he ca it's called magical event lighting or something like that. And he does these programmat programmatic lighting setups. So all the lights are programmed to like go with like the music. He had like um, fire, like cannons that like mm. they would like spin around. He had like big those sparklers that you see at like concerts and stuff. 
and the whole house, giant laser projectors on the roof, mm. all the windows had like a some sort of screen that the whole thing was like programmable like a TV. So you had like lighting effects in all the windows. He had these like spiders all over the walls and these little spider webs. He had pumpkins, three different pumpkins, and their mouths and eyes were programmed so that it looked like they were singing. It's like a whole concert right there in his front yard. And I was like, if I ever win the lottery. We I'm know the first thing that Andrew's gonna buy. I will make it everyone's problem. <laughs> mm. And I looked on his website, he sells kits where you can get like, not as elaborate as he had like in the demo or, or the videos that he puts up, but you can buy these kits where you have like the majority of the parts in the controller and then licensing for the songs and everything, FM transmitters, like seven grand to have like your entire Christmas and Halloween light Halloween. show. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That sounds cool. It looked like it is bad. At, it, you could legitimately bring an actual band or singer, artist, whatever you want to call them, and they could have performed in his front yard and you would have, you would have not known that it wasn't actually a concert. It was that cool. Mm. Was it in Wilmington? No, was I actually don't know. I don't know where it was. I just, I happened to see the video. It came up as a recommendation on YouTube. And I was like, okay. Cause the, the thumbnail of course is like the most elaborate part of the scene. It's okay. It's okay. The children have abused the table. It's okay. Yeah, we have two. Those tables actually held up pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to show you guys after this because I don't. The songs that they used are definitely copyrighted. And I can't play them on here because then the video won't be monetized. Well, thank you for coming, mm -hmm. and thank you for waxing his spider legs out of his nostrils. <laughs> that way, isn't that bad? Or just no. took too long once. Was it too? They talk to me, so I appreciate that they are no longer talking to me. Sure. Sure. Aren't you happy that I remembered last week when I was trimming my mustache not to do that? It was on the calendar. You can get a little bit I don't, haunting, so you can get them out good. I don't. I don't look at the calendar and be like, I wonder if Larry's coming over to wax my my nose this week. <laughs> well, I got a text this morning. Yeah. Well, a reminder which, text. Which was a good, just making, was a good just text. making sure. Well, I was like, shoot, do I have anything? Do I get some more? Yes. But we had a whole bag. Yeah. Well. The company, whatever it is, whatever you guys are looking at, we'll give you a, a shout out. There'll be, we'll make it one of the shorts. Seraphil. I don't know how to say it. Show the little beans. I like the little beans. Seraphil. Seraphil. Yeah. It's from Paris. Interesting. Ooh, fancy. If you guys want to sponsor the show, <laughs> sponsor Larry doing this to more people. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we, can, we can convince the people to come on here and have Larry do it and then psych them out <laughs> we can have some grown men on here crying mm -hmm. that's what i wanted to see matter. i wanted to see a tear drip down your a eyeball tear. not a single I tear felt, i felt it well up a little bit but my nose is really sensitive i broke it a couple times so like any like you just you just do the rim you don't like get all, all the way like in there you know what i mean right like you don't want to like take out all your hair you need a little in there so yeah. like filter out the torn bummer that's what this is all for yeah i need to Probably do that again a couple months. Yeah, I think we need a we need to buy a kit. So you just need to buy the little candle wax, the wax thing. Anyway. It's the wax. You, you might I you might be able to get it on. You might be able to get some somewhere. Just you want, you want the good stuff. Like you might you maybe you can't get it on left. Somebody know. We could make that. A se I've been trying to figure out a reoccurring segment that we could do to like just troll people. <laughs> so do you guys remember? Years ago, the will we won't we rip his beard off? No, 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 no. That would be trolling people. I mean, we could call something like that, but so do you remember? I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, maybe, um, would have Matt Damon come on and then be like, right at the end of the show, he's like, oh, we don't have any time, sorry, you know, like just something like that. I've been trying to figure out something like that. There was a guy, this communist guy, that swore up and down that he wanted to come on the podcast and convince us that to try communism what I, so i wanted that i wanted that to be like i was going to have him like as a remote guest and what? we would do a show and be like oh sorry we don't have any time for you and just end the call with him do it four times we should bring him one of those games oh yes you guys can read the cards yeah we can play a game like cards against humanity kind of thing it's worse oh Ooh, so, now i need to know so we have some neighbors they own an online gambling company 
Okay. And uh, it's called biggercrowds.com. Okay. And so they have about 5,000 accounts across the country. And it's a gamble. They gamble, but it's for points because they don't have a gambling license. Right. So all these patrons pay cash to these bars to play. And they win like bar tabs and baseball hats and t-shirts and stuff. Gotcha. Like prizes. Um, but they make a lot of money off of it, right? But when COVID hit, obviously nobody wanted bigger crowds and the bars were shut down. So they they didn't make any money for like two or three years while this is going on, right? So they invented two games. And one is called, really, Karen? <laughs> and the other one's called um, The Inappropriate Workplace. Okay. okay. So th- these two games became the top 500 sellers on all of Amazon during okay. COVID. See, we're at home playing games. Yeah. So really creative. And, uh, and then when COVID was over, like. Which yeah. one's your favorite? Well, we, we um, they're both really funny. I mean, you All know, right. I'll, it's like. I'll order them. No, I, I'll, we have some. I'll bring them to you. Okay. Like, he's got a storage unit full. Of them. And I don't, oh, I'm okay. not even sure they sell them at Amazon anymore. So I think they stopped doing that because the gambling company came back, right? So uh, they didn't need to do that. Anymore. I think people kind of quit playing games and that business was a play. But they created all the cards, him and his wife. Like, it's pretty crazy. We've been, we haven't had a game night here, have we? We haven't. So I was like, hey, give me some of those games. I'm going to put them in all my Airbnb houses. And they're no. like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't, don't put them in there. Like, you're going to get bad reviews. Like, this oh, is really no. derogatory, right? You really so I'm like, know who He's you're like, just make sure you play the game first. And then, and then, and then, so we played it. I'm like, yeah, these, these can't. <laughs> like, like, it's just like, you got to play it with Philly. You're like, Good friends, right? Like, gotcha. Like, it was super offensive, right? All of this stuff. So, that's well, how, I can't wait well, to I mean, see him. If you're offend, that kind of offensive person, it's, you know, whatever. That's so. how, I mean, not all of the cards are like that with Cards Against Humanity, but you can pair cards that can become offensive to people. Like, there are some cards that by themselves, it's not offensive. And then you're like, you know, I've seen ones like people talking about 9 11, things like that. And they're like, it was a good thing. And you're like, no. Let's see, this is going to be a snippet somebody's going to use. But, you know, stuff like that. You know, oh, like, yeah. you know, coming, changing, changing the context, putting string things together to offend people. Yeah. 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 Nice. Well, so, where should people find you guys if you want them to find you for you real estate? Find us. I mean, okay. Don't, don't use Larry for, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, you can call my wife. She does all the work, actually. Okay. Um, Website. Social media? We don't really have any. We, we do. Larry Ellis, Corey Ellis, Salty Shorts. Oh, yeah, we have saltyshorts.com, which go. is like a, you know. And that's where the Airbnbs are, too? No, if you want that, you just call us or go on Airbnb. Right? So, so if you got if you got a big wedding planned and you're trying to book a beach house, these are your people right here. We've seen some of them. They are nice. Very nice. Good staycation. You know, if you want to go for Christmas or... New Year's or Thanksgiving night, Valentine's Day. There you go. We can have a wax party. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got to put that in your, your booking notes. Yeah. Can you do like, a, are there like add-ons that you guys can do? I've never, I've, I've, I've stayed in the Airbnb, but I haven't mm-hmm. stayed in enough to know like, can yeah, you? Yeah, you can, you can um, recommend things, you know, like other businesses, which we do like places they can go rent, you know, golf carts or barbecues or, you know. Gotcha. Like beach chairs and umbrellas or. You know, whatever. You can also recommend like someone come into the house and like a chef and they'll make dinner for everybody. Ah, so that'd be good. Any kind of service if you want. Interesting. That'd be good. That's smart. Very smart. I don't even think about that. I actually know some people that have like some hole in the wall type Airbnbs. It's nothing like the classy beach house places that you have. They're basically they're just their homes, but they live next to like Notre Dame's football stadium. Mm -hmm. So one home game weekend, they can book out their house, stay with a friend or stay with their family or whatever, book out their home as an Airbnb. And if they're close enough, park a bunch of cars in their lawn and they pay their mortgage for two months. Damn. That's pretty good. Yeah. They're not nice places, but they're walking distance to the stadium Mm -hmm. and it's just convenient. Yeah. Man. Yeah. There's probably no hotels around there. If there are, they're probably full. So. Oh, yeah. They're always booked. Yeah. Like, we're, we're going to the Michigan game next weekend in Ann Arbor against Michigan State. Where is it at? Ann Arbor, Michigan, just outside Detroit. Oh. Uh-huh. And so we're staying like three and a half miles from the stadium. The 
the rate for Saturday night is nine times more than Sunday night. Mm. Is that it's a night game. So mm. people are coming in Friday, probably staying Friday. Saturday, obviously staying because the game won't end until probably close to midnight. And then most people are leaving Sunday, but we're staying. So the the rate, and we're staying in like a really nice, it's like 4.7 star hotel. It's like a uh, something restaurant. It's like a, super highly rated and recommended. And when we were going to originally go Friday through Sunday, the price was basically double what it is for Saturday through Monday. Mm. Which is why I did it that way. Yep. So you're leaving Saturday, coming home Monday. Yep. Yeah. Are you flying there, driving? Flying. flying. Yeah, she bought us tickets. She bought us tickets, bought us the game tickets, and then I booked the hotel. So nice little. This weekend? Next, this coming weekend. Next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we're having our first um, dog sitter experience mm. next weekend. And she's coming over to meet the dogs on Sunday. Yep. Hopefully it goes well. Yeah. We'll Good see. luck to her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, saltyshorts.com. Yes. And we don't need like details about like who's coming. Like if it's you and your goddaughter who's 21, we don't need to know <laughs> that stuff. You know, just. As if you're of age, so in the regulations on our pages, that's it. We don't need to know full details. You guys don't have those, uh, was the, the little sound sensors or whatever that they people were getting in trouble for? No, no, I don't even know what that is. So there's, there's always like a sign stuff there, don't be too loud, don't throw a party. Like, well, we don't allow events unless they buy event insurance and then you know they want to pay extra. Yeah, there's different, like we do weddings and. You know, we can house 500 people down there, right? Between all the houses that we That's have. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, like, we have like houses with five master bedrooms, five master baths. You know, we can sleep 25 in a house, 15. So, but so we got to be careful. The college kids don't try to book them, right? So, yeah. We like families and, you know, weddings are cool, you know, like family events. Right. Who does the laundry? We have, we're vertical, so we own a cleaning company too. See, so, doing it all right. There's a YouTuber that I follow. They, he bought a resort uh, outside of San Antonio. And the resort had, it was like, it was condemned for like 20 years or whatever. So there's like some properties on there, some houses, some things that had, like they're not like dilapidated, but they're not updated. They're going through like updating them, turning it into an actual resort now. So it's essentially just Airbnbs across a large property that he owns the entire property of. And that was the issue that they ran into. Like we have people that are booking for one night and then we have to come in here and strip everything down. And they were doing it all themselves. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, I need to figure out a better solution for this because it can't do this every single day. Need a laundry facility for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's a lot. Well. Towels, linens, pillowcases, comforters. It's a ton. Not my job, not my problem. No. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for yeah, thanks for having coming us. in and giving me a. <laughs> you can put a little hook on those hanging on your Christmas tree. Yeah, so. yeah, there oh we go. Oh my god! Let people guess what they are. Yeah, <laughs> we could totally do that. It would if one was red and one was green. Well, it's great, made it. There, there we go. Uh, no. Why? Well, we'll mail you some different ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some blue nuts. <laughs> no, you don't need to send us any of that. We're good. The problem is bigger. They're like, it's not that big. Jesus. Damn. <laughs> well, you're talking about the whole includes it's some of the, the contour of the ash. Oh my god. Like a water balloon. <laughs> like a water balloon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, this has been very delightful. An exciting episode 100. We've crossed that threshold, and uh. Yeah, if anybody's looking. I think you've been growing those notice since episode one. For <laughs> sure. Probably. For sure. For sure. He does not groom himself very mm. often. I do. Well, I have a little. Yeah. Do you just trim them normally? Yeah, the little electric thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Doesn't doesn't do very well. But you got to keep doing it over and over. Every yeah. Three days, right? To go back for every week. You know, it's like. I forget to put my context in half the time. So even when I see myself in the mirror, I don't see it. Yeah. So. The rest of us see it. Well, I mean, whose problem is that? Yours or mine? Well, that's why I just don't look at you anymore. <laughs> True love. Yep. 
Well, guys, thanks for coming yeah, on. Thank you. And uh, bye. Shake and bake. Thank you. Thank yep. you.